First, uh, I should warn you, uh, it, it will be partly physics talk. I'll try to be uh, more precise as uh, I, um, I, I usually do, but uh, uh, it won't be exact, uh, exactly mathematics. And also, it's a work in progress. So uh, it's unfinished. Uh, uh, right now, it looks like uh, a condensed matter inspired definition of uh, K theory, which uh, is a bit disappointing, but I'll try to present it uh, in such a way that uh, uh, it is clear that uh, there must be some uh, generalization that is potentially very interesting. Uh, so uh, it's condensed matter inspired, and uh, this is uh, the theme picture. Uh, it's supposed to represent uh, a, a sheet of graphene. You know, graphite is a black material used uh, to make uh, the pencil core, and uh, it consists of uh, sheets of atoms. Uh, these are carbon atoms uh, arranged in a honeycomb lattice. And uh, uh, s such uh, sheets have uh, some nice properties. Uh, one of them, uh, they exhibit uh, a quantum hole effect at low temperatures. Uh, so uh, electrons uh, can move in the structure hub between atoms, uh, and uh, if we put this uh, material in a magnetic field and uh, all supply some uh, a magnetic field is perpendicular to the board, and uh, we may apply some electric field E. And uh, it's a whole material. Uh, the current will flow in, in the perpendicular direction. And uh, uh, the whole conductivity is the ratio of uh, the current and the electric field. And uh, uh, under the, the right conditions, it's quantized in units uh, of e squared over 2 pi h bar, this is the Planck constant. Uh, and that is called an uh, integer quantum Hall effect. Uh, n is an integer. And uh, of course, the, in physics, nothing is precise, but uh, this formula is actually uh, very good. It's uh, good to. Uh, very high precision, and uh, as the temperature goes low, uh, the precision becomes better. Uh, and uh, in some cases, uh, one can find uh, uh, rational uh, numbers. And uh, this is called fractional quantum Hall effect. And the first is integer quantum Hall effect. Now, of course, uh, both uh, systems are very interesting, and uh, uh, they have uh, nice properties uh, in addition to this quantization of whole conductivity. Uh, one property is the existence of uh, edge modes. Uh, this system uh, has an energy gap, and I'll explain in a moment what energy gap is. Uh, uh, basically, in the bulk, uh, at very low temperatures, uh, uh, there are no quasi-particles, but uh, there are excitations like waves propagating along uh, the edge of this uh, graphene sheet uh, in both cases. In the fractional uh, case, uh, there are also quasi-particles called anions. However, I want to exclude uh, this kind of system uh, because uh, it's more complex, and I'll focus on uh, that kind of systems. And uh, the hope is to uh, include integer quantum Hall effect and many other things into some nice mathematical theory. And so far, uh, we have succeeded to do that uh, for non-interacting fermions. Uh, for interacting fermions, there are conjectures how uh, the answer should look like, but uh, there is no proof. And uh, uh, actually, uh, there are some analytic difficulties uh, even defining uh, the problem. But I believe the problem can be defined and solved uh, for so-called invertible phases. I'll explain what invertible means. Uh, so 
first, uh, uh, let me uh, write an example of some Hamiltonian, because we'll be uh, uh, considering uh, quantum Hamiltonians and their ground states. And uh, uh, the goal is to uh, understand those ground states and uh, construct the space of such ground states and find uh, their homotopy types. And this is an uh, example. Uh, it's called uh, transverse uh, field Eisen model. Uh, it's a Hamiltonian on a one-dimensional chain. And uh, one important property is locality. Uh, the Hilbert spaces that is the product uh, of uh, Hilbert spaces of individual atoms in the, or spins. In this case, uh, uh, the Hilbert space uh, is uh, uh, C2 uh, raised to the tensor power n. Uh, there are n atoms. Uh, and the Hamiltonian acts in this Hilbert space. Uh, it has two terms. Uh, with two parameters. Uh, H is one parameter. And J is uh, the other parameter. Now, uh, I wrote the sum exactly uh, from j to n minus 1, meaning that uh, uh, these two spins are coupled and those spins are, are, are coupled uh, till the very end. And th there are certain boundary conditions. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, I'll ignore boundary conditions. And uh, uh, the philosophy is that uh, we're studying materials. And those materials can occupi occupy some space, and one can uh, cut. Uh, uh, Accurately or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, we want to construct uh, the phase diagram of the system in terms of parameters a, h and j. So in this case, we have a two-dimensional space of Hamiltonians, but not all these Hamiltonians are equally good. Some of them are. Uh, beta at certain values of parameters, the system uh, has bad behavior. So uh, let's write h and j and uh, put some points we'll, which we'll study. Uh, this is point 1, this is point 2, and there will be some point uh, 2 prime and 1 prime. And uh, I'll draw these lines. Uh, you'll see what they mean. So at point 1, uh, h is greater than 0, uh, j is 0. And uh, we can find uh, the ground state, uh, the state uh, with the lowest energy. and uh, uh, it the corresponding uh, eigenstate. So the eigenvalue is minus uh, n times h. And uh, the corresponding eigenvector is uh, uh, spin uh, pointing to the right, uh, tensor n. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an eigenvector of uh, sigma x. Uh, op oops. This, this h is not flat constant. This one, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I use h bar. I actually, there will be no more Planck constants. Um, so uh, uh, all the spins uh, are up in the ground state. And uh, uh, there are some excited states. Uh, so we, one can uh, draw the spectrum uh, like this. Uh, 
this is energy. Uh, this is uh, the ground state. And uh, the main difference between the two buildings is the spectrum that is to the right from that. We always make it real. You always make it God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> also, time goes up. I, I don't know whether time goes horizontally in mathematics. <laughs> so uh, E1 uh, is uh, E0 plus uh, uh, 2H. And uh, E1 corresponds to uh, flipping one of the spins down. So uh, this is a degenerate state. The ground state uh, is unique. And the spectrum has a gap uh, between the ground state and the first excited state. Uh, and uh, that is a good situation. The ground state is unique. There is a gap. We want uh, such systems. Uh, let's consider point two. So this was point one. Uh, point two. Uh, H is 0, J is positive, and uh, uh, the ground state energy is um, a minus uh, uh, n minus n minus 1 uh, J. Uh, there will be two ground states. <coughs> and the spectrum looks like this. Uh, there are two degenerate ground states. Uh, plus uh, 4j. And uh, this is multiply degenerate because we can flip uh, any spin here. And uh, if we flip uh, the spins at the boundary, there are some spurious uh, states uh, with uh, low energy uh, right between these two. Uh, this will be ignored because we're ignoring what happens at the boundary. And also, uh, there is a notion uh, of a local energy gap. Uh, although these two states are degenerate, we should not say that uh, the uh, energy gap is zero between those states. Because uh, if we uh, flip one spin in the middle, uh, we'll go up. And uh, to go from here to there, we need to flip many spins. Uh, we should apply a very big operator. And uh, part of uh, this game is uh, understanding what lo uh, local gap means. And uh, in the case of free fermions, I'll give uh, a precise definition of a local gap, and uh, the problem uh, will be solved uh, partly uh, due to uh, this, uh, this definition. Uh, for uh, many body Hamiltonians with interacting uh, spins or fermions, it's hard to even define a local gap. And uh, uh, this is uh, one of the problems. So we're looking for uh, states. Uh, Uh, or Hamiltonians uh, with unique ground state and uh, uh, a local gap. And uh, in this picture, uh, this is good. Uh, uh, this is not good because uh, the ground state is not unique. Uh, re regarding the gap, uh, as we go along this line, 
the spectrum rearranges. And uh, uh, starting from this picture, uh, if we go from 1 to 1 prime, uh, those energy levels, the first excited uh, states, will be, uh, uh, will be split. There will be a band. Uh, and uh, uh, the gap between the ground state and the first excited uh, state will remain for a while. And it will close at this line. It's a phase transition line. And uh, here, uh, uh, at uh, 2 prime, uh, we enter a new phase. And uh, uh, this phase uh, uh, is deemed uh, bad, but uh, it can be fixed by adding some terms uh, to the Hamiltonian. Uh, so uh, in this picture, it looks like uh, the phase diagram consists of uh, two good phases. So uh, this is good. And that is good. Uh, so there are two connected components of the space, according to uh, this phase diagram. I mean, connected components of the space of good Hamiltonians. Uh, if we add uh, more parameters to the system, of course, uh, uh, the uh, topology will change. And uh, I'll write down uh, the answer for one-dimensional systems. In principle, one could define uh, uh, B sub D of uh, uh, good uh, Hamiltonians uh, on a lattice in D dimensions. And uh, uh, we'll consider the unit disk in D dimensions and uh, elaborate what a lattice means. Uh, uh, good uh, requires uh, further uh, qualification uh, if uh, the system has dimension higher than 1. Uh, but uh, in dimension 1, uh, one can uh, get an answer, at least non-rigorously, as uh, physicists do, B1, uh, if we add uh, more parameters, uh, is homotopy equivalent to uh, K Z comma 3, the lindbergh maclean space. And uh, I'll not explain that, but uh, let me uh, explain uh, the easy version. Uh, B0 uh, will be a homotopy equivalent to the uh, ellenberg maclean space Kz2. Uh, this is good uh, Hamiltonians uh, of spins or bosons. And uh, later we'll consider uh, fermionic Hamiltonians. Uh, so uh, what is B0? Uh, it's a zero-dimensional uh, system, uh, and uh, all these locality conditions are not important. Uh, here it was important that uh, uh, only uh, neighbors can talk with each other. Uh, here uh, it's just a, a finite dimensional Hilbert space. Uh, and we can say that uh, uh, B0 is the space of Hamiltonians uh, on the Hilbert space uh, C to, to the capital N. Uh, and such Hamiltonians should have uh, an energy gap. The ground state should be separated. Uh, now, uh, one can map uh, the space of Hamiltonians to the space of their ground states. And the ground uh, state uh, is just a vector uh, in uh, C to the n defined up to a phase vector. You want a tensile product there? Or not? C, C, no, 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 no. It's just uh, uh, n-dimensional space, capital N. Okay. And uh, a zero-dimensional system uh, means uh, 
just the blob that uh, consists of uh, multiple spins. And uh, one may define n to be as 2 to the uh, little n, the number of spins. But uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, these are spins or some other object. Yeah, R right. Uh, so uh, the ground state uh, is a unit vector uh, and uh, so there is a map to uh, Cp n minus 1. This is the space of uh, uh, such states. Now, uh, this is actually uh, a fibration, and the fiber is contractible. Because uh, uh, we can take a convex combination of two Hamiltonians and get a Hamiltonian with the same uh, uh, ground state. And so uh, this is actually a homotopy equivalence. And uh, uh, Cp n minus, uh, n minus 1, uh, as we take uh, uh, n going to infinity limit, uh, goes to uh, Cp infinity, which is the same as uh, Kz to Kz two. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the full story for zero-dimensional spin systems. For uh, zero-dimensional uh, fermionic systems, uh, it's slightly more complicated, and uh, I'll have to spend some time on that. Uh, particularly defining uh, non-interacting systems. So uh, if we just think abstractly, uh, we can define FD uh, this, the same as BD, but uh, for fermions. Sorry, for, for B1, so these two things are connected, these two components you mentioned inside the space B1. Uh, yeah, they are connected. And how, how do you connect? Uh, we can add some uh, uh, perturbation. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, add a, a polymetric sigma x here as a perturbation. Uh, uh, or we may add, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this, uh, this will work. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, a difficult question, actually, how uh, precisely we define uh, those Hamiltonians. So uh, we want uh, certain properties uh, of a Hamiltonian. Uh, like I described, the interactions are local, uh, the ground state is unique, and uh, uh, the excitation gap can be defined locally. You don't care about the translation invariant? No, no, it's not translation invariant in general. And furthermore, uh, I, I want to take a limit. Uh, we consider a, a system uh, in a disk uh, on a lattice, and uh, uh, we can consider finer and finer lattices, uh, adding more and more atoms. And uh, uh, there are two limits. First, we can simply add more atoms. And uh, there will be uh, a high dimensional Hilbert space, but uh, those extra atoms uh, uh, may not be doing anything if uh, the Hamiltonian is just uh, uh, so fixes. Yeah. Higher interactions, right? You have many, you can have many bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And eventually, we want to uh, add more atoms at the same time, uh, uh, making interaction uh, uh, short range and take some sort of limit. Yeah. But I don't want to start with D, D means what? Is, is it the space of? 
parameters that describe your Hamiltonian, uh, or it's the space of ground states? It's, uh, by definition, it's the space of Hamiltonian, so they are parameters. Yeah. But, uh, but effectively, you can map, map it to ground states uh, and, then, and then divide by the yeah. Right. Uh, uh, with fermions, uh, it becomes uh, slightly more complicated even in zero dimensions. Uh, if uh, zero is homotopy equivalent uh, CP infinity cross uh, Z2, because uh, uh, the Hilbert space uh, of fermions is Z2 graded. And uh, uh, the ground state uh, can belong uh, to the even component or to the odd component. And that's why we have two copies of CP infinity. What kind of fermions are these? Are these Majorana or, or Dracula? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll use Majorana fermions, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll describe that. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about free fermions. Uh, as a pretty good approximation, uh, the integer quantum Hall effect in graphene uh, is explained uh, by non-interacting fermions. In principle, fermions can uh, do two things. They uh, can hop from atom to atom, and they can interact with each other uh, repulsively. Uh, if we ignore interaction, it's just hopping. And uh, uh, the hopping Hamiltonian uh, can be written like this. There is some hopping matrix. Uh, an electron can uh, hop from uh, atom K to atom J, like this. And this is a uh, hopping matrix. A, J dagger A, K. Uh, this is uh, uh, annihilation and creation apparatus of electrons. Uh, we remove an electron from uh, atom K and put it on atom J. Uh, but uh, it's just uh, an accident uh, of the world we live in that uh, the electric charge is conserved. And uh, more generally, we can consider fermions with non conserved charge. And uh, those uh, fermions. Uh, can be described by uh, Majorana operators uh, uh, more concisely. So uh, I'll consider uh, the Majorana formalism and more general Hamiltonians than that. So uh, let me introduce uh, uh, the operator algebra. It will be the Clifford algebra. Uh, it's Clifford uh, uh, of 2n uh, over complex numbers. Uh, The generators are C1 through C2n and Cj, Ck plus Ck, Cj equals 2 delta Jk. These are the commutation relations. Um, we can uh, Asso uh, associate uh, various objects uh, with this algebra. First, we as uh, associate uh, uh, the real space of dimension 2n, 
such that uh, each basis vector uh, corresponds to uh, one of the generators. And uh, that is called L. It's R uh, to the 2n. And uh, we can define a complex structure uh, in that space. And uh, let me use uh, a standard complex structure. It's given by uh, a matrix uh, A0 that squares to minus 1. And more explicitly, I'll just write down this matrix. It consists of uh, such two by two blocks. And so on. Uh, this will be uh, our imaginary unit, and it makes uh, this space into a complex space. One can uh, actually define two complex spaces, uh, L uh, plus minus and uh, uh, one can define uh, the spinner representation uh, of this algebra abstractly uh, like this. Uh, it's a Z2 graded space. And it's uh, uh, the exterior power uh, but uh, being a physicist, they prefer a more concrete definition uh, so uh, let's introduce uh, apparatus corresponding to basis vectors of uh, those spaces, either with a plus or with a minus. Um, and uh, AJ, uh, the annihilation operator is uh, C2J minus 1 plus IC2J over 2, and uh, AJ dagger. And we will focus on this, uh, which uh, correspond to a basis in uh, L minus. And we uh, build uh, this Hilbert space like this. We postulate uh, the existence uh, of a vacuum uh, such that Uh, it is annihilated by the annihilation operator. And uh, we define the space uh, indexed by uh, zeros and ones. That is the, the Hilbert space. It's uh, uh, Z2 graded uh, by the parity of K. Uh, and uh, we can construct the Hamiltonian acting in that Hilbert space. Uh, 
Uh, that is a generalized hopping matrix. It must be a real skew symmetric. And uh, uh, this matrix may be regarded as, as an element uh, of uh, the Lie algebra SO2n. And uh, this map from A to H of A uh, it's a, a representation the spinner representation of uh, little SO2n So uh, we'll focus on such Hamiltonians. These are called free fermion Hamiltonians. Uh, now we need uh, to introduce more structure. Uh, first we uh, define a gap, and then we define locality. Uh, the gap is defined uh, differently for A and for H, because uh, the spectrum of A uh, it's imaginary and uh, the spectrum of H One half uh, so uh, we can add up uh, those numbers uh, with uh, different signs that are uh, two to the n eigenvalues and uh, to uh, separate the ground state from the first excited state we need a low bound uh, on the spectrum uh, of A. So uh, we will assume that uh, uh, those numbers uh, um, okay, I'll let me write it this way. A and B uh, will be constant, and I want uh, A to be strictly smaller than, uh, than B. In principle, independent of, N. independent of N, yeah, independent of N, yeah, that's important. Uh, now, there is a, uh, a reason why uh, A equal to B is not convenient, at least, uh, because uh, we want uh, a soft problem. And uh, softness will uh, play an important role. So we leave some gap here between A and B, and also between 0 and A, and take N to infinity. Uh, now, uh, how do we define a, a gap? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, this is already a, a definition uh, which is equivalent to uh, Uh, let me put I A. It's between minus B minus A uh, union A B and uh, uh, that is actually too restrictive. <coughs> because uh, we want to study systems like the integer quantum Hall effect and then uh, they have gapless uh, edge modes. And we want to somehow express the idea that uh, there is a gap in the bulk, but uh, on the edge, uh, the maybe gapless modes, actually, uh, uh, the conditions on the boundary uh, are unimportant. How do we define uh, a local energy gap? And uh, 
uh, to do this, we'll uh, uh, massage this uh, definition, and then uh, in the end, we'll modify it in the right way. So, uh, first, uh, let's write a is a smaller minus a squared, less or equal than b. Uh, it's an operator uh, inequality. Uh, and now, uh, we can uh, write it in this way, uh, minus a squared minus a squared plus b squared over 2. Operator norm is bounded by uh, b squared minus a squared over 2. And uh, that is equivalent to the original one. It's too restrictive. Uh, but uh, uh, let's look at this matrix. And uh, it's important that uh, uh, a is already squared. And uh, uh, rather than trying to uh, modify a, we'll modify this uh, big matrix. So uh, you consider a disk. There will be uh, atoms uh, close to the boundary uh, where uh, an electron can hop out and uh, uh, can hop in. And uh, uh, hopping out means that uh, something uh, is missing that uh, uh, should be there if we keep extending the system. Uh, and uh, that uh, basically uh, violates this condition. Uh, it creates some gapless modes near the edge. However, if we uh, consider a smaller disk, uh, the big disk is uh, d to the d, and the smaller disk uh, called d tilde, d tilde uh, is a disk of radius uh, uh, 1 minus r d, uh, where r is uh, the locality. Oh, sorry, I forgot to define. Uh, I forgot to define the locality. I should say. Uh, a is our local if uh, the hopping uh, element between uh, J and K is separated uh, by more than R vanishes. So uh, if uh, A is uh, our local and uh, we restrict uh, this matrix, not A itself, uh, to this smaller disk, then uh, this condition uh, can be satisfied, even for uh, uh, the integer quantum hole system. Uh, the gap is defined differently. Uh, for A, it's a gap around zero. For H, it's uh, a gap uh, near, the gr near, near the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. They all have to be the same size. Right. Now, uh, the exact definition will look like this. So your parameter space are these A's, right? Your Hamiltonians are these A's. Yeah, yeah, the, the parameter space is A. Uh, so, Uh, 
uh, that is the projector uh, onto uh, the disk D tilde. And we require that uh, the norm of uh, uh, this uh, restricted operator is uh, B squared minus A squared over 2. And uh, to see that uh, this definition is reasonable, let me uh, give some lemma. Uh, first, let's call this metric, uh, matrix M. And M uh, is uh, 2 R local. And its norm is bounded by a constant. And the lemma will be formulated uh, uh, like this uh, for uh, our local matrices. And suppose that uh, the norm of uh, pi b m pi b is bounded by 1 for all disks b of radius r. If uh, this hypothesis is, uh, is satisfied, then uh, the norm of M itself is bounded by 1 plus O of little r squared over capital R squared. And uh, the implicit uh, constant in uh, capital O it uh, depends on the dimensionality of, of the space. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So the, the pi is just a projection onto the on, onto functions in the in the disk of radius a d tilde disk. Right? Yeah. Uh, now, what is the a's and what are the a's and b's doing? Don't they commute with that? That's what I'm confused. Uh, these are numbers. Yeah. Yeah. These are numbers, right? Yeah. So why isn't this? Why don't I have pi? Why don't I have pi squared? Why isn't pi squared one? I mean, or is it pi? Yeah, I don't understand that pi of is it pi of that or pi times that number? Uh, pi times this operator times that operator. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's an operator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The A is an operator. Yeah, yeah. Capital A is, uh, okay. is an operator. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so the conclusion is uh, we can. Uh, test uh, uh, this condition locally to some accuracy. And uh, that is what we uh, want. And uh, uh, we can choose uh, a suitable R, a capital R, that depends on uh, the little r and uh, those parameters, uh, little a, little b, uh, such that uh, this condition is meaningful. Now, uh, let me define the space of uh, good Hamiltonians, or good matrices A. Uh, we say that uh, capital A And uh, I'll leave some uh, room here, but uh, I forgot to define uh, this thing that is uh, just a formality. Uh, it's uh, 
a set of atoms. And uh, mathematically, an atom is characterized uh, uh, by a position in the disk and uh, a finite dimensional Hilbert space. And it will be a real Hilbert, uh, Hilbert space. So, And also, uh, we have Euclidean space uh, L sub j for each uh, uh, element of uh, S. Or maybe I'll, I'll erase this d. It too many symbols. Uh, so uh, this operator uh, belongs to this space if uh, A is R local and uh, A comma B locally gapped and locally gapped basically means this with a suitable choice of capital R uh, now uh, we need to take some limits and uh, we want to get rid of all those parameters uh, uh, one limit is pretty easy because uh, uh, this is a directed set of uh, fil filtered category of this uh, uh, S hat. So we can take uh, uh, the limit And uh, it would be nice to take uh, a limit over R like this. And the result should not depend on A and B. Uh, the S is just where you're putting your points and forming your matrices. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, I'm confused. What is the gap condition? Uh, I thought that the gap is that something should not be too small. Right. Uh, uh, so it's on this board. Uh, we began with uh, this condition. Actually, it's a squared. We began uh, with this condition. Uh, so the spectrum is uh, <coughs> has a gap around zero, and that guarantees. Uh, uh, that uh, the spectrum of H has a gap around the bottom because uh, the uh, ground state corresponds to the choice uh, of minuses everywhere and the first excited state uh, we change one minus uh, two plus uh, so this is what uh, we want ideally but uh, we cannot do that it's too restrictive so uh, the idea is to uh, write this condition in terms of a squared and then modify it. So uh, those numbers uh, basically uh, come from uh, this sequence of transformations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, actually, here it, it, it's better to say that M is uh, the whole operator here. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we multiply by 
projector onto a smaller disk, it's OK, because uh, uh, then we can ignore this pi d. So uh, now uh, it would be nice to uh, take r to 0. Uh, first, we are uh, adding more and more atoms. And uh, the electrons uh, can hop uh, uh, at very small distances almost continuously. And this, uh, in principle, should allow us to uh, reduce the hopping range. Uh, so. I don't know how to do this, and maybe uh, it's hard to do, but uh, I can do something slightly weaker. So I can define I can define uh, uh, this guy. Uh, the idea is to uh, define a spectrum. Uh, this uh, A sub D is supposed to be a spectrum. It, it should define a generalized cohomology theory. And uh, we first defined uh, the cohomology groups, and then use uh, the representability theorem. So the definition looks like this. That is a pair of spaces. And uh, uh, this guy is, by definition, uh, a relative uh, Grothendieck group, uh, which is defined like this. Uh, equivalence classes of uh, pairs. which agree on uh, y naught. And uh, the equivalence is defined in terms of paths. So uh, we say that uh, Yeah, I, I want to understand the topology of AD, which is not defined explicitly. Uh, we first define uh, this uh, homotopy theoretic object and reconstruct AD. Where is the dependence on D coming from? Uh, because uh, we, uh, we have this uh, set of atoms in the d-dimensional disk. Uh, the hopping matrix. Uh, has a locality restriction. The electrons cannot hold uh, f further uh, than R in this space. <coughs> so this is the restriction. And you're expecting the answer to depend subtly on D. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll write down the answer. Okay. Um, so, why, uh, so where does it come from this idea it should be a spectrum? Uh, right. So. Now let me uh, forget about uh, this limit procedure, although it's also a bit uh, interesting. And uh, uh, let me pretend that uh, AD is defined directly. Uh, then uh, 
I'll list some uh, high-level properties uh, that guarantee the, uh, that it is a spectrum. And uh, uh, the first uh, principle is uh, invertibility. Uh, and uh, uh, invertibility means that uh, we can uh, uh, take two systems, uh, A and uh, minus A, and uh, uh, the, such a pair of systems together uh, will not depend on A up to homotopy. So uh, we have uh, the following uh, thing. There is a path. from here to this matrix, and then uh, uh, to another matrix. And what are, what are constraints on this path? Uh, I can write down the path explicitly. Uh, so can you write down this, the path have to lie in some natural space that you're considering, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, it, it, lies, uh, it, it lies in this space, uh, A sub D, okay. that is defined by the limit. So uh, let me call it uh, x0, maybe x and y. And uh, we define x of t. Uh, let me consider uh, the path from uh, this matrix to that matrix. Uh, now, X and Y anti commute. And uh, therefore, uh, the square of this matrix is just cosine squared by T over 2 X squared. And uh, if x and y are gapped, uh, then x of t is also gapped uh, with, by the same bounds. Uh, so this is the first uh, principle. can be shown in the same spirit, uh, A uh, plus B, which is the same as uh, uh, the block diagonal matrix with blocks A and B, uh, is connected by a path to uh, B plus A. And uh, and the last thing is softness. Uh, and uh, more concretely, uh, let me call it a uh, uh, diagonal restriction. And uh, suppose we have some uh, function u uh, from the disk um, uh, to local matrices. And uh, we want to uh, construct uh, one local matrix using, uh, using this uh, whole function. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's done like this. Um, we construct uh, a matrix a that depends on u. 
uh, with indices j and k. And now uh, we have to assume something uh, about this function. Uh, we assume that uh, it's uh, uh, Lipschitz constant uh, has a certain bound. And uh, this bound depends on uh, the dimensionality and the constants A and B. Uh, Uh, and uh, under this assumption, we can show that uh, A sub u uh, belongs to A d with slightly different parameters. And uh, uh, the idea uh, can be uh, illustrated. No, no. Uh, suppose uh, we have such a map, uh, Lipschitz bounded, and we construct uh, A upper U this way. Uh, then A upper U uh, is also locally gapped with different parameters. Uh, for each, no, a S is a configuration, uh, let's fix it. We, we have one configuration S. And uh, when we have uh, two sites, uh, J and K, uh, those uh, uh, sites or atoms are, clo uh, are close to each other. So the function U does not change significantly, uh, significantly from J to K. And uh, that basically means that uh, this guy and that guy are almost the same. And uh, uh, we can uh, kind of uh, interpolate between, uh, between different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, values of the function u. Let me uh, illustrate it uh, geometrically in the one-dimensional case. And, uh, Uh, instead of local matrices, le uh, let's consider uh, planks make, uh, made of wood with some grain. And uh, uh, the function u uh, will uh, show the dependence uh, of uh, the grain on some parameter, on the homotopy parameter. So uh, we are in, 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 in the one dimensional case. U And I'll be illustrating uh, these things, uh, A1 uh, with wood grain. So uh, this is a parameter t that goes from minus 1 to 1. And uh, here the grain is vertical. Then at some point, in between, it's tilted. Here it's uh, parallel. Tilted this way and vertical again. So the softness condition says that uh, we, we can uh, interpolate between all these uh, patterns and uh, 
build a single pattern uh, that looks like this. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I, 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 I I'm not good at that thing. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, three conditions basically guarantee that uh, we get a spectrum, and uh, we can construct uh, maps. FD uh, from AD to the loop space of uh, AD plus 1. Uh, recall that uh, AD comes with a base point given by uh, A naught, this uh, standard uh, complex structure. Um, so uh, we can consider uh, loops uh, based at that point. Uh, and uh, uh, GD going in, in the other direction and one can uh, show that uh, uh, these maps are homotopy inverse of, of each other. How do we construct uh, those maps? Uh, F sub D uses uh, the invertibility and uh, G sub D uh, uses uh, this construction. So uh, F sub D uh, goes like this. Uh, we have some system uh, in dimension D, and we want to construct a family of systems uh, in one dimension higher. So uh, let's call uh, our original system A. Um, and uh, uh, we start alternating. Uh, a a not the base point uh, and a minus a not a not minus a not uh, then uh, this is a homotopy parameter t it goes from zero. Uh, to one half to one. And uh, at one half, uh, it will be some non trivial A. And at one, uh, it will be A naught again. And uh, uh, one can continue uh, indefinitely in both directions. But uh, the idea is that we first apply uh, this homotopy going from uh, A0 minus A0 to A minus A. And then uh, we apply the other homotopy in an alternating pattern. And uh, to make uh, this look better, let me just uh, 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 show the analogs of, of uh, those intermediate states. First, uh, there is a state A0, and uh, these are those little dots. Uh, then we uh, go up. Uh, using this homotopy. And uh, in the middle, we would create this uh, thick dot corresponding to A and uh, empty, uh, empty circle corresponding to minus A. So uh, there will be this alternating pattern at the middle. And uh, uh, 
going from uh, the trivial system to this non-trivial system, there will be some uh, system uh, that doesn't split into individual dots, uh, like, uh, like this one. Because uh, there is some hopping between uh, those two sides. And uh, uh, above it, uh, there is an alternating pattern. Uh, now, if we run uh, the second construction, uh, uh, this uh, diagonal restriction, uh, we'll get uh, a pattern that looks like this. Uh, we synthesize uh, the following pattern. Uh, so there is a bunch of dimers and uh, one single dot uh, when we uh, cut across this section corresponding uh, to this middle, middle thing. And uh, uh, we can actually remove all those dimers by pushing them uh, uh, down or up in this diagram. And this will be uh, a homotopy to the identity map. It's uh, just a rough idea. So what is this? So, so, uh, yeah. So in the end, what what is the? How do you describe the homotopy of all this? Like, like this is it. Uh, oh well, uh, this is uh, this picture is a uh, or that picture is a description of uh, F sub D. Yes. G sub D is described by this procedure. Yes. And uh, uh, this procedure, in principle, gives. Uh, uh, a pattern in the same dimension. Uh, however, uh, since uh, uh, we begin and end uh, with A naught, uh, which is uh, diagonal or uh, block diagonal, uh, it's like uh, those grains of wood that are uh, perpendicular, and we can cut at any place. Uh, so uh, the uh, starting point and the end point uh, can be cut, and uh, this uh, whole section will be uh, considered uh, as a system uh, of the original dimension, not d plus 1, but uh, uh, dimension d. So uh, we just ignore the locality restriction uh, in the horizontal direction. And uh, that's uh, how we construct uh, g sub d. Uh, and uh, uh, now, uh, one can easily show that uh, the composition GD FD is homotopy equivalent to the identity map on AD. Uh, and that requires some non trivial argument. Uh, uh, basically, we need to uh, track these patterns. Um, and uh, uh, it's actually uh, a two-sided inverse. One can uh, compose them in, in, the, in the other way, and it's also the identity. So this, these are the elements that describe your, uh, your homotopy for, the, uh, for, the, for these graphs, for this uh, fermionic system? Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this makes uh, A sub D into a spectrum. Uh, it, uh, it means that uh, A sub D is homotopy equivalent to uh, the loop space of A sub D plus 1. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, uh, that means that uh, uh, ground states uh, of free fermion Hamiltonians, or the Hamiltonians themselves, themselves uh, form a spectrum as uh, the dimension changes. Uh, 
from such abstract arguments, one cannot go further. But uh, uh, since uh, everything is built out of matrices, one can uh, use more information. And in this particular case, it's pretty easy. Uh, the answer is A sub D uh, is K O uh, uh, D minus two. Let me check. It's correct. Yeah. So, so we get uh, a shifted KO spectrum. Uh, but uh, that is by itself, uh, as, as I say, uh, condensed matter inspired uh, messy definition of K theory. And uh, uh, the interesting uh, part of this story is that uh, it looks like. Uh, everything can be generalized to uh, interacting systems uh, with suitable conditions. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.